Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, life coach and meditation coach. Welcome to a- another episode or actually yeah another series of embodied movement with jesse lucas hi this is ronald johnson welcome to another episode or episode two with jesse almost got made a mistake there <laughs> of embodied movement and what are the next steps so if you guys listen to our first episode we dove in deep into that onion i always talk about different layers of instead of what is body movement how is the mind affected through the body and just getting really scientific on everything is an experience in life so Jesse, kind of take it away as far as what are the next steps? Yeah, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Gloria. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm excited to have this particular part of the conversation because one of the most common questions I get is, what is embodied movement? And the question that's really being asked there is like, well, what do I actually do? Like, what do you, what do you mean? Is it, is it a workout? Is it dance? Is it, you know, what, what is it? So just to kind of bullet point to, to bring up to speed. So you guys may have heard parts of my story, my background. I have a foot in, I've been a yoga teacher and I've also been a personal trainer. So I've been able to see experientially both for myself, my own practices and with my clients kind of approaches to movement from kind of multiple angles. So from an angle of stress relief or an angle of even, you know, a sense of self or spirituality. And then of course the angle of just make your body function better, whether that's losing weight or gaining muscle or um, healing from an injury so that you can, you have a joint that works again. And the through line that embodied movement takes is that you know, not, you know, not taking guesses, not taking shots in the dark, you know that the movement you are choosing to do, the physical movement you are choosing to do is correct for what your personal needs are, your personal physical health needs, your personal emotional needs, your personal mental health needs, and even, you know, your energetic or spiritual needs. And that's a tall order. So that question of what's next can get very baffling if you don't, if you don't have a few simple kind of questions to ask yourself. So the first thing I want to say as far as what's next is take any of the preconceived rules you have off the table. I'll, I'll give you an example. So a lot of, I, I am myself in this category, a lot of women who kind of hit their forties, uh, that's me, find themselves, you know, their, their bodies start uh, behaving differently. They start something that wasn't happening before might be happening now out of the blue, whether that's weight gain or mood fluctuations or, uh, you know, things like that. So for example, if there's, let's say weight gain, 
the standard fitness instruction is, well, if you're gaining weight, go do cardio, calories in, calories out, burn the calories, lose the weight. And I found that, especially with women in this category that I am in, and again, I'm making a very generalized statement here. Um, often there's something else going on under the surface. Hormones are changing. Unfortunately, so many people right now are dealing with an autoimmune condition. There's something else going on and that cardio actually puts you in a burnout instead of burning calories. So as far as what's next, the first thing would be to take any blanket statement rules off the table because that may or may not be the right next step for you. And to really ask yourself, what, what am I really wanting here? What am I wanting to feel in your body, in my body? So, I mean, you guys can, you know, listeners, you can jot these questions down. What am I really wanting to feel in my body? Am I needing more energy? Am I feeling sluggish? Am I tense all the time? Am I getting, you know, headaches and I really want to decrease that pressure in my head. You know, what is it? Just kind of make that bullet point list. What am I feeling in my body? Second question, ask yourself, what am I doing now? What is my current activity level? What's my current routine? And if you don't have one, that's fine. Just kind of jot that down. And if you do, whatever that is, whether that's sporadic or you're dedicated like every day at the gym before or after work or whatever, or you're a weekend warrior, it doesn't matter. Just it's important to become self-aware. So what is it you really want to feel in your body? You know, what's going on that you want to shift? What are you currently doing? And then to take a look at that and just to just, Take a take a moment and see, is there something that stands out to you? It may it may be obvious. Like if you are feeling really tense and tight all the time and you are at the gym every day, that might stand out to you. I am not stretching. <laughs> I'm not fitting in kind of low-key activities like a gentle yoga class or a walk in the neighborhood or uh, getting a massage, you know, something might just stand out to you right away. Um, and if it doesn't stand out to you right away, um, that's where we can get into the next step. But before I do, um, Ron and Gloria, I'd love to hear from you guys if there's anything from that kind, that little first stage that stood out to you, or anything that came up, or anything you want me to clarify. Yeah, I, I um. Go first, Gloria. You go first, please. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, for instance, knee. So I can totally, so I, I resonate on this women in their 40s with the body changing or, you know, we're a lot of the women, I do have friends, we always talk about this, that, you know, we get so caught up sometimes with blaming our hormones for everything that's coming up for us, every feelings that we feel in our body. And, um, and sometimes we don't understand it. Like what's happening to me today? We ask ourselves those questions, you know, why am I feeling this way? All of a sudden something's hurting and we're feeling bloated and, you know, we don't, we're lazy. We don't know what to do, but we, we get so caught up with, um, just blaming our hormones or I'm being hormonal today. For me, my biggest one is my knee all the time. Even going to the gym, I do have knee problems, um, and like I said, you know, I think I've mentioned this before, um, the, the, um, I have a torn ACL and a torn meniscus that I've never, I never got repaired. Um, I never had surgery for it. I just kind of, you know, did the strengthening around it, the muscle strengthening so I can kind of go back to my daily activities. But, um, the, the whole, um, I, I think it's just having that awareness like what you mentioned, it's hard for a lot of the women. So how does one even become aware to that? Yeah. I mean, so one of the terms you just mentioned, you know, we are hormonal. I am hormonal. And that, even that, so the, this is a, a kind of teaser into what I would say the next step is, is to look at some of the the conditioning that might be going on under the surface and what i mean by that is some of the 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 conversations that happen 
that kind of guide your perspective to how you feel in your body, how you feel about your body, how you feel about your health, the decisions that you make, uh, whether you do have a movement routine or not. If you do, what is your routine? And for so many people, you know, whether it's quote unquote hormonal women, (laughs) you know, (laughs) women in their forties who have those (laughs) aches and pains or whatever. But I, I mean, I dare I say probably just about everybody for, for whatever reason, we are just kind of in this go, go, go mode. And the, so the stories that are kind of dictating our, our perceptions and our decisions under the surface are the ones that have been put there previously. You know, we have probably been taught that Oh, you know, once you, once you hit a certain age, things start to go and that's just how it is. And your knee is going to be able to tell you the weather that's coming and, you know, you got to move it or lose it. And so even though my knee hurts, it's still a good idea to go to the gym, no pain, no gain, that kind of thing. Right. I just, I'm spitballing here. Those are common conversations I have heard. Um, They're certainly not the only ones. So that question of how do you become aware there, I, one of the coolest things I think is happening right now. So, you know, here we are in 2021, our, our daily rhythms have been very different this last year and a half or so. And it's kind of shaken us all up and disrupted our perceptions. And for some people, it's allowed us to see what our bodies have been asking for all along. Now, whether we've listened to that or not, and let alone, you know, accommodated the, those signals, that's a whole, that might be the next episode. Um, but if you have had, how, so how do you become aware? If, if you've had that little inner voice say, hey, something's got to change. If you've had that kind of waking feeling, this is not how I feel like I, 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 I think, this is not how I think I should feel in my body. I know I am fill in the blank X, Y, Z, you know, getting older, had this injury, been through whatever situation, but I don't think I should feel this way in my body. If you hit, I, like, if there's just been, whether it's a little flash moment or it's a thing that nags you every day. That is your personal invitation to awareness. And you can, you can heed that invitation. You can, you can go a few more steps and stages there. And look, I know, you know, we were just talking about this before hitting record. We are all busy. And one of my favorite things to do is to teach people how to fit this kind of body awareness and whatever movement, you know, going back to what are the next steps of embodied movement, whatever that means, how to fit that into your real life. It does not have to mean you take up an, you know, you get up an hour earlier to meditate, to turn on that awareness. It just means you note that little nagging feeling, that inner voice, whatever it is, you note that in a different way. There's a very cool thing that happens when you actually acknowledge a, a feeling or a thought coming from within your, your, it, it, a copy gets sent back to your brain. And when you acknowledge it, your brain gives it a little check mark and gives you greater access to what that sensation is telling you. So I'd say the first step on how do you become aware is simply acknowledging that thing you might have been ignoring for a long time. Does that, does that ring any, any bells for you? Hit any buzzers for you? (laughs) Yes, it does. It it really does. And I was just thinking about, um, in, in this case with, you know, when I, uh, get in contact with my girlfriends, um, in regards to this, because we seem to be all in the same cycle. Right. And I've also heard of, um, of something about when your knee starts hurting, Oh, because it's raining. I don't know if you've heard of that, but I've been told that many times when it start, you know, when it's raining, your knee will start hurting. And I don't know what it is with that weather, but 
in this case, in having that awareness, sometimes I feel like I have it and sometimes I don't. So I would say it's okay to have a conversation <laughs> to, with yourself. Um, I know that I've, I've given that advice to a few of my girlfriends and they thought, oh, well, that's weird. I don't talk to myself like that, but I, I do it sometimes and it, it is okay. It's okay to have that, um, to have that conversation to yourself. And what I mean by that is maybe taking that step back, right? Just kind of listen to yourself. Like what you're saying is, wait, wait a minute, what, what is this really I'm feeling? Because like I said, a lot of the women get so caught up with, with putting that blame on their hormones, but not really realizing that it could be coming from somewhere else or something else. And the very cool thing of wherever it is coming from, whether it's hormones and yes, our hormones dictate, they are the storytellers of our moment to moment experience, but they're not out of our control. And, you know, whether it's the hormones or the barometric pressure or the, the stress levels, you know, stress is another kind of threshold marker for, you know, whether you're feeling pain or tension or like you, you want to go to that exercise class or, or whatever. So taking, you know, having a conversation with yourself, that's a really great way to put it. Just that moment of inquiry. And the cool thing is nobody has to know you're doing it. You know, you can do that. You can be like whistling and doing the dishes, or you can be in the shower by yourself with the door closed, or you can be on your commute, or you can take two minutes before you open up your computer and hit that join Zoom or whatever you're doing and just have that, that moment and access the wisdom in your body that that's what embodied movement is all about moving towards accessing that wisdom in your body. Yeah. I have a question here. So it's really great because in this bubble, you, Gloria, everybody's aware, right? So when the awareness becomes an apparent, we know we need to create a change. You know, when I coach a lot of clients and even for myself before I became a coach and really getting into the psychology of human beings, it's really the, the dysfunction comes. I, I learned that last time on our podcast is, you know, I feel this. So like, say, for example, it's Gloria's knee. I feel my knees is a certain way. I shouldn't feel this way. But my knee hurts. I shouldn't feel this way. So a lot of clients, I think it's stuck between going from step one to step two because that feeling of I shouldn't be this way. Mm, we talked about the mm -hmm. friction when I was complaining yeah. about yes. my knee. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the friction. And so uh, yeah, how do people get between, when they're in that small friction stage between step one, which is awareness, step two, action, mm -hmm. let's say. How, mm -hmm. how do you do that? And that's, yeah, and, and so by the way, um, Jesse, the reason why he brings it up. So I've been, that that's the kind of situation I was in this week with my knee when I, because I have heard it and then I'm starting to, you know, kind of get the strength back a little bit, but it was stopping me. Maybe it's just me, but I was stuck in that friction of, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I should be able to do this, but my knee is limiting me in doing the activities that I want to do. Mm, okay. This is real deal <laughs> right now. This is real, real deal. Time right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm going to answer it this way then. It's a little bit like choose your own adventure. Look, I, like I said in the very beginning, I, I stand on a bridge and on one end of the spectrum, I'm very interested in kind of the subtleties of the, the powerful messages that come through our body's sensations that have to do with our personal growth, our emotional intelligence, healing things that are less physical and mechanical, like a torn ACL or a meniscus, okay? And then on mm -hmm. the other side, we live in these physical bodies and they have things like ACLs and meniscuses. So on one side, it may be that there's some very practical attention to pay to this knee, whether that is, you know, just some of your, you know, home remedies, DIY, holistic kind of things, or maybe medical attention. So it might just be that kind of alarm moment of, okay, I haven't 
addressed this in the way that I that I should. So it might just be that. But not, so I'm going to table that part for a moment and go back to the other side. And these things can work congruently. They can work simultaneously. It might be, you know, in our choose in our choose your own adventure metaphor that you kind of look at what goes on on one side, you look at what goes on on the other side, and it isn't both, it's one or the other. So it can be both, it can be one or the other. The cool part of approaching any movement practice, so, you know, just to kind of put this in context, I think I might have said this before, you know, embodied movement can really be applied to anything, whether you are on the volleyball court, whether you are in the gym or on a bike or taking your walks in the neighborhood or at your yoga class or getting on and off the floor with your toddler, whatever it is, you know, standing, doing the dishes, your posture in your car, your desk, it can be applied to any, any movement pattern going on in your body. So this particular moment, talking about this, this friction, there is such a beauty and a gift and a, a benefit of ease that comes from just putting down the struggle. That, that moment of like, I should not be feeling this in my knee. Even just, you know, hearing that, my like stress energy just went up. Mine. I don't even, it's not even my knee. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're talking about your knee over there. <laughs> but like, you know, and that, that, kind of elevates the, all of the stress hormones that get pumped into your body that promotes inflammation, that makes you more frustrated. All of those things kind of take your progress to a grinding halt. Okay. Not to, you know, we're trying to keep this shorter and sweeter today. So not to go completely down into a scientific path, but when you have a stress reaction like that, you actually, your stress response has two different options. One is protection and one is growth. You know, so like Ron, when you're in the gym and you're pumping those heavy weights, you're putting stress on the muscles in a way that promotes growth, right? Correct. When, when you uh, are stressed in this way, I should not be feeling this. Your body goes into protection. You're that it's, it's a different receptor of stress and it goes into protection and it shuts down the possibility of growth. And I'm talking about the kind of growth it takes to heal a knee that is hurting and the kind of growth that allows you to make decisions that put you on that healing path. So on one hand, okay, we might we might need the rest ice elevate. We might need to go get it checked out by a doctor. We might need, you know, a knee brace. We might need something very practical on that line. On the other hand, the answer to that is always what is going to trigger a relaxation response? So the antidote Opposite. to correct. The, and, and I'm talking, you know, I'm trying to keep this, you know, here we are over on the more you know, emotional and decision-making mode, not the knee brace or ice, you know, that kind of thing mode. So I'm trying to keep this as scientific as possible over here too, because when you are in stress response, you're frustrated, your knee is hurting, you don't know what to do. You're saying, I should not be feeling this way. Your body's pumping out those stress hormones, which is only increasing inflammation and decreasing your ability to make a good decision about what to do, let alone feel good about it. The only thing as a human being, as a, as a mammal who operates in this way, that is going to get you off of that track is to trigger a relaxation response. Now, what that means for you, I don't know. Like that's, that's gonna be unique to you. Is it meditating? Is it going on a gentle walk, something your knee can handle? Is it, I'm gonna take the night off and not go to the gym and I'm gonna Netflix and chill. Yeah. Is it, I need to call a friend, not someone who's just going to, you know, listen to me bitch and moan and gab about, you know, we're just going to amplify the pain, but someone who's really going to hold this moment with integrity and compassion 
you know, for a lot of people, that is the most potent thing that can elicit a, a relaxation response is love and compassion and understanding and being heard and being validated. You know, I'm just, these, these are just examples. Um, there are lots of ways to elicit a, a relaxation response. Some things are going to work for you. Some things are, are not. And it's, it's very individual based on what your personal experiences are. But that is what I would say to do next is to get curious take the responsibility, right? This, mm-hmm. is, this is taking the torch, <laughs> you know, this yeah. is being a responsible grown up here and figure out what is truly in my busy life in this stressful time on the planet right now, at least for this moment, I'm not talking world peace for the rest of your life. I'm talking just for this moment. So you can choose the next best thing going to elicit a relaxation response to just switch gears and open the door because otherwise you are going just to continue that, that frustration loop. Wow. Thank you, Jesse. And oh, you. yeah, that's very, very good. Thank you so Mike much. Drop. <laughs> yeah, <Mike> so, <laughs> I want to say thank you because you did something for me to know. So I have to do a self-evaluation for my contract job and, you know, doing a self-evaluation, it's, it's not really how we human beings think and, and move and rationalize life. And, and obviously there's so many sensory acuities, like what the questions say, what does it actually mean? What should I write down? Also what I'm feeling. Okay. If I write down a one question or answer a certain way, I may get a bad review will turn. I may lose my contract job, right? All these sensory acuities are happening inside because as soon as I opened it up and I had to listen to do the um, performance review, I already got stressed out. I answered one question. I closed my laptop. So now after hearing what you're saying is that now I'm going to create the opposite. So not just opposite with my mindset, how I look at something, but I'll obviously taking a break. Maybe I go run on a treadmill. I'm going to walk my dog um, after a podcast, but things that actually give me back and not take away. So that's what I really got out of that. And that kind of hit the nail right on the head. It was perfect. I need to hit, I need to hear it. Mm-hmm. And this is the right time for me. So I want to say thank you. I love it. And it's probably the right time for somebody else to, I mean, it's, it's, you're, you're getting your body to work with you and for you instead of against mm-hmm. what you are desiring. Mm-hmm. It yeah. sure is. That's it. Yeah. Which I think for me, that's what had happened to me this past week is it was working against me. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so, and, but I, we were, as Ron was reminding me of from our previous podcast about the friction. So yeah, thank you so much, Jesse. That's um, kind of lightened up some things for me, what I would need to do next. You're welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> so I love having these conversations and I know for sure, you know, you're, the, I think we've said this before too, the more personal we get, the more universal we get. And <laughs> I, I, I can only imagine someone, li- someone listening, you know, for both of those examples that you guys both just gave the, the knee and this evaluation, you know, we can, we can all relate. There is so much friction happening and there is not an instruction list as to what, what to do next. And I mean, I think that this right here brings it full circle as far as what are the next steps. And I'm, I'm grateful to open this part up because most of the time people expect a protocol of movement to be the answer to that question. Well, first you have to warm up and then you have to go do this kind of movement and then go do that kind of movement. Be careful of these things, make sure your form is correct and stretch afterwards. That's Mm -hmm. not what's next. You know, we can talk about a protocol. We can talk about, you know, figuring those things out. But if you're skipping this step of getting your body on board to be working with you, it doesn't matter if you're sitting down to do a mental task or getting out there to do a physical task. You have skipped the crucial step. This is the embodiment part. Living in your body as it is operating, all of the signals that are firing, 
all of the emotions that are brewing under the surface, even all of those, <laughs> those dang hormones that are calling the shots, you know, what, whatever yeah. it is, you know, all of it, this is the next step to take inventory of what's going on, gain a little bit of understanding, learn. I like to say decode, decode these body sensations so that you can work with the code. You know, it's like if I'm on my computer and I keep trying to print, but I'm hitting the wrong code and I'm getting mad that something different is happening and I just keep hitting the same code, I'm just going to keep getting mad. Yeah. And the exactly. result isn't going to happen. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the next step is take inventory of what's going on, gain a little bit of that. You know, we've mentioned this before that kinesthetic kinesthetic intelligence shift gears if you need to shift gears like from that you know in these, these examples tonight the the stress response into the relaxation response then then you can take the next steps wow I like so the that. next step is yes just a release what you need to let go so you can either change or move on to increase less friction jesse thanks again and for being on life's a show podcast I got a lot of information today. I seem like Lori got a lot of information. <laughs> I did. And our so audience will get a lot of information. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, how can I apply this? Not not when something happens. So most of the people think that I have to apply these tools when something happens. No, tool has to be ready so when something happens, you can apply it. It's actually the opposite way. So mm -hmm. I have the tools now that I can apply. I'm going to apply it today after we got this podcast about my review and just move on. That's what I'm going to mm -hmm. do. So mm -hmm. thanks again, Jesse on being a guest on Life Shuffle Podcast, season one, episode two, on what's the next steps. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thanks, you guys. Thanks again, Jesse. And until our next um, episode.